triple A gaming? Not anymore. These days, it's more like triple F gaming. <laughs> So I took a sick day last week. There was no delayed input last week. And that was tough because we had the unexpected juicy news that the United Kingdom's Competition and Markets Authority, CMA henceforth, this one board decided to block Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard. And that this one board's decision to make this block would effectively block the deal from happening in every country all over the world. Effectively, the deal is dead. I, I should say that Microsoft is appealing this decision. Technically, there's still a small chance that it could go through, but that small chance is minuscule. It's like being down 3-0 to o in a playoff series. You have a chance, but you don't have a chance. It's not going to happen. If you don't want a sports analogy, it's like Buggy the Clown's trying to get a red poneglyph. The world government just found out and they said we can't let that happen. I wrote that last week. And here's the general thesis I was working on. Xbox will never win. And then this week, Redfall, Xbox's big release of the first half of 2023, released to absolutely dreadful reviews. Worse than anyone imagined. And I was thinking we could do this for an episode. Xbox will never win. But then, on Thursday, the CEO of gaming at Microsoft, this person named Phil Spencer, appears on the Kinda Funny X cast. Look at this setup here. Look at all these green X's. Of course he would pick this, right? That's a, that's a cushy platform. That's a nice place to soften some bad news. However, upon actually watching this video, I was shocked to discover that it is in fact Phil Spencer sitting there for 30 minutes willfully eating shit. There's nothing that's more difficult for me than disappointing the Xbox community. I can sit here and wallow in, in, in my own frustration and I'm not pointing at anybody but myself. I'm disappointed. Um, I'm upset with myself. There's a lot of Twitter firing of Phil right now, which is fine. I'm, I'm way overpaid for the role I have anyway. I'm kind of at a low point right now in terms of my delivery on that commitment to the community. You can try to take me to positive space. I'm just not in that headspace right now. Turns out it's a really fun show to watch. The hosts do a great job. I do recommend watching the whole thing. I'll put the link in the description. But while I'm watching this thing, I'm Truly surprised by Phil Spencer's, I, I guess, candor, but also how he volunteers to trash his company and the decisions he's made. To this group of dedicated and obviously misguided adult Xbox fans, he says this. But we are not in a position, and I, I see it out there, I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're gonna see console share shift in some dramatic way. I mean, I thought I was about to make like a provocative statement, you know? And then Phil Spencer just blurts it out on a podcast. Like it's a fact. Today's episode, Xbox will never win. Firstly, let me say this though, I know. It is immature to talk about consoles winning or losing, right? If you sell tens of millions of a product, you didn't lose shit. If you just had one of the best quarters ever for Xbox content and services, despite hardware being down 30% year over year, that's not losing. Nobody talks like that. Yet, here's how Phil Spencer talked on this Xbox theme podcast. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation. It says we, we lost the most important generation. We put out the Xbox One and we lost. I don't understand why he's talking like that. And it gets harsher. This video went up two days after Redfall 
was released. Redfall is a brand new game out right now for sale. And Phil Spencer buries it. We let a lot of people down this week with the launch of the game. He comes on this Xbox show for Xbox fans and he says, sorry, it's bad. And they asked him an interesting question. They asked, at what point do you determine a video game should be delayed? And his response is, you delay a video game for bugs. And Redfall's problems are bigger than bugs. I don't look at the review scores on Redfall and I don't, I, there, there are quality issues and we're working on those. Um, but I think there's a, a fundamental piece of feedback that we get that the game isn't realizing the creative vision that it had for its players. That doesn't feel like a, hey, just delay it. That feels like the game had a goal to do one thing. And when players are actually playing, they're not feeling that thing. They're not feeling the, the creative execution of the team. To be fair, he does reassure us repeatedly that he believes in the studio, Arcane Austin, and what they will do going forward. But he is also clearly deeply ashamed of Redfall and the harm it has done to the Xbox community. Even if you're here on this podcast to try to win back the favor of your diehard loyal fans, it's stuff you shouldn't say. He explicitly cites how review scores are an indicator for why its release is so disappointing. He even goes on to imply that the game isn't worth $70. I also know that these games are $70 and I'm not gonna like, I'm, I'm gonna take full responsibility for launching a game that needs to be great. And what it's like, what it appears to be is that you have a CEO here who reads YouTube comments. I don't know where else he's getting these ideas. You get the impression Phil Spencer doesn't just read the top comments, he scrolls. This is the look of a man who digs through the comments all the way down. And it just bums me out. It's like if this was a battle of the bands and they're in their garage. Locked and loaded, trigger fingers itching, hunting vampires in New England. Hey, can we stop? Hey, can we stop? Can we stop? Okay. What's up? I know nobody asked, but I just want to say, we're not going to win the Battle of the Bands. <laughs> what? We're going to fucking lose the Battle of the Bands. You know that, right? We're going to fucking lose it. This song makes me sick. Are you okay? No. It's like, not fun anymore. You know, it's like, where'd that, where'd that fire go? Well, fortunately for Microsoft gaming fans, Microsoft gaming is more than just Xbox. Phil Spencer's title may be head of Xbox on Twitter and the kind of funny X cast. It's the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer. But officially it's CEO of Microsoft gaming. That's who announced the Activision acquisition. That's who shows up on CNBC. So when Phil Spencer assures us that Xbox is the core of the business, I believe him, but also the implication is that there's more, maybe a lot more. At one point he introduces to us a brand new verb I've never heard before, out console. We're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people. I don't like hearing him say it, but it's true. He's never going to out console Sony or out console Nintendo, but he is absolutely going to out game pass them and out X cloud them. And that is actually what CMA's problem was. Do you remember last year, we had this thing where Phil Spencer and Jim Ryan, who is, by the way, the president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, they were having this hot air blowing contest all over Call of Duty exclusivity going forward, if the deal were to happen. And it was just a show, it was just a show they were putting on for the CMA. And in the end, none of that actually mattered. In their deliberations, the CMA determined that if Microsoft were to make Call of Duty an exclusive to their platform, they would actually lose money. 
they said we have absolutely no problem with the Xbox console getting Activision Blizzard games. At this point, everyone has come to an agreement on the fact that Xbox will never win. It'll never be the number one console. It'll never be the number one gaming brand. It will always be out consoled. So the future I see, the one that I think is implied between the lines, is that Xbox as a brand will move forward, but it won't be the primary emphasis, which will be Microsoft Gaming and whatever they determine to brand that with. But Microsoft Gaming is the room for growth. And no, I'm not saying Xbox is going to die. Phil Spencer promised, as long as there are players, that will never happen. But I am saying that maybe in 10 years, this is not an Xbox controller. It's a Game Pass controller, and it works on your Xbox. There's one last little clip I'd like to play, and it features an offhand classification that I find very interesting. We have to be transparent about what we're showing, that what we're showing is representative of what our console customer, our most committed customer to our brand, financially committed, what they're going to see, what they're going to play. It's just a funny thing to say casually in a podcast environment that Xbox owners are the most financially committed customers. Meaning that the people who own Xboxes are spending the most money. However, it is clearly not enough and it will never be enough. Xbox will never win. However, Microsoft still intends to win. So we'll see how they plan on doing that. I predict many more years of losing ahead. No losing streak lasts forever, but to me it just kind of seems like this team is built for losing. That's delayed input for this week. Thanks for watching. Hey, I wanted to acknowledge a mistake I made in a previous episode of Delayed Input. Turns out I myself do my own fair share of losing. Now, I had previously criticized the boring reveal trailer for the Horizon Forbidden West expansion, Burning Shores. It ended with this reveal of this big thing, a Horus coming to life. And I had said, like, man, I've already seen that thing come to life in the first game. This is not a big reveal. It turns out, no, I did. they did not come to life in the first game. That was simply wrong. So I guess it was, in a way, a big reveal. And it also turns out that that thing, it comes to life in the game. Not a big surprise. But it's the reason, part of the reason, it's one of the reasons why this expansion is exclusive to the PlayStation 5. Is that eventual confrontation with this Horus as impressive as what you're imagining right now? Hell no. But if you had a PlayStation 4 with the PlayStation 4 version of Horizon Forbidden West, you would have no way of knowing. And so I think about, I was thinking about how Phil Spencer is talking about how he wants everyone to feel like first class citizens, right? If you're on Xbox, if you're on PC Game Pass, if you're on xCloud on your phone, Everybody feels like you're getting an equal experience. Everybody's first class. And then Sony, on the other hand, says if you're on PS4, we want you to feel bad. If you're on PC, you're second class. If you're on Peacock, this is the best we can do for you.